this is Steve Huff at stevehuffphoto.com and I'm here today. I'm going to show you today uh, a little quick overview of Aperture 3. Welcome to the Aperture trial. I did buy it, but I didn't get it yet. Um, and as you can see, I loaded pretty quick. Anyway, I wanted to go over some of the features of Aperture 3 and I'm actually new to Aperture 3, so I am no guru or expert on it. But I have been using it for the last couple days, and I've found it very easy to use. So what I want to do in this video is go over uh, this image that you see on the screen, which is a straight from camera image that you see. And basically, I'm going to do some tweaks within Aperture to improve the image and show you how easy it is. And then I'm going to export it to Photoshop to to fix the distortion that you see in the image. Um, and then I am going to save it as a JPEG and plop it on the page where this video is so you can see the before and after. Um, so first, what I'm gonna do is show you a few things on Aperture. You can go to the browser mode, which shows you the images I currently have imported into my library. So if I double click on this, I'm gonna hit split view. This will show you all the other images I have down there. Um, within Aperture, you also have your loop, so you can check out the 100% detail of anything. Um, but what I want to show today is basically just the adjustments. So let's work on this image here. I'm going to click on the Adjustments tab right over here. And right up top, you're going to see that there's a Presets folder. The first item is called Quick Fixes. So for those who don't want to mess around too much with the images, you just hit Auto Enhance. Whoa, look at that. It pops up in like a balloon pop-up. Uh, raise the exposure. Lower the exposure. Hold highlights. Let's click on hold highlights. Okay, it's just going to tame down the highlights a little bit. So these quick fixes are all in here, and it gives you a preview of what it's going to look like. Um, if we click auto enhance, it's kind of like the auto levels of Photoshop. Uh, it brightened it up a little bit, maybe too much. Um, another thing that's in the presets is a color menu, and there's cross process, there's vintage, uh, toy camera, which really punches up the color and adds a vignette, um, punch, which doesn't really look too punchy, intensify, sepia, etc. You could change the white balance, see what it looks like in a little pop-up box, and there's even a black, black and white mode. Um, with red filter, orange filter, all the different color filters. You can lower the contrast, higher the contrast. Infrared. So there's all these presets, and you can also edit the presets and uh, save them, save your own presets. So that's a pretty cool um, thing. There's also adjustments. Um, here is the slider, the menu with all the adjustment sliders on the left side. You can choose here what you want to show up in your slider menu or whatever it's called. I'm saying slider menu because I don't know the actual name for it, but it's your adjustment menu. Um, so you have everything here. Retouch, red eye correction, spot and patch, straight and crop flip, chromatic aberration, all kinds of, of settings, kind of like Photoshop in a way. You also have your quick brushes. If you have a portrait, you could do skin smoothing, dodge, burn, polarize, intensify, contrast, tint, etc etc blur sharpen halo reduction noise reduction definition vibrancy you can do saturation with a brush so for example right here I have my brush if I wanted to raise the reds I would just brush it actually raise the strength there to show you more extremely whoa the reds are getting all pumped up here so I'm using the selective saturation brush um, now I have to do them all because I started doing all those I could undo it, but I'll just might as well pump them up just for demo sake. Okay, so now that we got all the brushes, I showed you the brushes. There's actually more to it. I'm just kind of doing a quick overview because I only have 10 minutes. Um, you have the boost slider, which boosts your, your light or something. It makes it a little too bright. I like to keep that down a little bit. Your sharpening slider is here. And again, you can adjust your sharpening, pull out your loop. You can make your loop bigger. And you can see what kind of detail you have once it loads in. There you go. Now this file is um, an M8 file. This is an old file. It's not from the M9. 
um, because it was just one that would work for the demo. I wanted to show the processing and distortion correction and all the good stuff. So we got the sharpening. White balance you can adjust right here. It's a little too orangey right now, so I'm going to bring that down. Also, the exposure is a little high for my taste, so I'm going to bring that down. And when you bring down the exposure, it will um, richen up your colors. Your colors will get very rich and deep. Recovery, same thing it does in Photoshop. If you have any blown highlights, black point, if you want to deepen your blacks, it will do that. Your brightness level, you can take it down or up. Uh, contrast, there's your contrast. Definition is almost like sharpening, but it's not. It kind of brings out some details in, in, in your image. So I'm going to bring that up high due to the, the subject matter of this. Saturation, I'm actually going to bring it down a little bit. Vibrancy, we can bring that down to give it a desaturated look, which I kind of like the way that looks right now. Or we can pump it up to give it uh, more of a bold, saturated look. I'm going to go somewhere in between, actually. We're going to go in the middle. Um, your highlight and shadow, same thing it does in Photoshop. If you have any deep shadows, you can bring them out with that. Works very well. Your level controls. Here's what I like with the color. You can adjust each color specifically, independently. So here's the red slider. I'm just changing the red saturation. I'm taking down the red. So that kind of gives it actually a very cool look. Um, it gives it like a dark brown brick color. You could change the hue here with the hue slider. But we're going to bring up the red back a little bit. There we go. The luminance, you could change the brightness of each specific color from light to dark. And you can do that with every other color. There's the yellows, just punched up those windows. I'm going to leave those punched up. You could change the hue of them, but it also is changing the grass. The luminance. So you can do that with all your colors. So if, if you took a picture of something very colorful and you wanted to get creative and change all of the colors, you can do that. The sky. Let's see what happens with the sky. Um, very, very faint. Let's go to the more blue. Oh, there we go. Purple sky, green sky. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but if you did want to do it, you can do it very easily. Edge sharpening. I'm actually turning that off. So we can also go to these quick brushes and click on sharpen. And you can do some selective sharpening to the brick to really make it sharp and stand out. I like to do this with buildings. Um, when I take photos of buildings, I call them mug shots because they look like a mug shot when I'm done with them. I don't go on the angles. Uh, I don't go from the side or the back. I go straight on and I take the image of the old abandoned buildings and houses and whatever. This happens to be an old shoe factory and it used to be a shoe factory in the 70s. Um, and now it's just a, an abandoned factory. Um, okay, so I did some selective sharpening. Within Aperture, you can press Z at any time to see the full 100% view of the image. Um, you press Z again to go back out, Z to go back in. Same thing with the loop as I already showed you, wherever you go, or you can just um, move the loop around. Okay, so we pretty much went over all the settings in there. Maybe tweak a little bit more the exposure. I'm going to take it down a little bit. Go. Okay, now if I right click on this image, it's going to give me some choices. I can go edit with a plugin. I have Color Effects Pro. I can put my Color Effects Pro filters right from within Aperture. I can edit it in Adobe CS4, Photoshop. Yeah.